Hello, hello everyone. Welcome back in the company of witches. Are you guys ready? Do you have your beverage? Are you nice and cozy? Maybe in front of the fire? Let's move on to chapter 26. Here we go. Chapter 26. I woke up late the following morning with one thing on my mind. The town hall meeting was today. Liz Coleman's town hall meeting. I didn't get a lot of sleep after my visit with Mr. Henderson. Once I had gone over everything with Izzy, I realized I was more confused than ever. Theo had told me Liz had left the bookstore around 9. That didn't give her a lot of time to get changed into the gown and over to the B&B. But it wasn't impossible, especially considering Theo hadn't checked the exact time. But even if I did believe Liz Coleman had been in the area shortly after her aunt had been killed... I would have a tough time convincing the police of that given they already had the recording. And if she had been there, what did it mean? I couldn't just assume she was the murderer. After talking about it for hours, Izzy and I called it a night. We both needed to get some sleep. I asked her if she would be able to get anything out of Nora about her connection to Mary. But apparently my aunt hadn't been in the most communicative of moods after our failed dinner. Once I was up for the day, I headed directly into town to talk to Nixie. I wanted to ask her if she had receipts for both the soap and the nightgown. I didn't know if she would give them to me or not, but it turned out the point was moot. The shop was closed. I then spent a good deal of the day trying to track down John Graves. I needed to give him the letter Maureen had entrusted me with. But I didn't have any luck finding him either. When I got back home, the B&B was uncomfortably quiet. I decided perhaps it was best for all of us to have some alone time before going into town. We all needed to be on our best behavior, and if Nora and I got into any more fights beforehand, that wasn't likely to happen. When it came time to go, I loaded. Uh, when it came time to go, I headed down from the loft and over to the B&B. Just as I was reaching for the door, it swung open in front of me. I blinked a few times to be sure I was I was seeing what I thought I was seeing. I had been planning on being extra sweet to Nora given how we had left things, but before I could stop the words from leaving my mouth, I said, You're kidding me, right? My aunt tilted her chin up in the air. What are you talking about? You don't think, I swirled my finger in front of her, this all might be a bit much? She arched an eyebrow. Nora was what <laughs> Nora was wearing a full length black velvet jacket that had about a million buttons running down the front and laced and pointy toed boots. Is there a broomstick that goes with this outfit? Maybe a peaked hat? Don't tempt me. I'm not in the business of dressing to make others comfortable, Nora brushed by me, then trotted down the front steps in a manner I would, I never would have attempted in those boots. Izzy came to my side and linked her arm through mine as we watched Nora stride toward the sidewalk. I met my aunt's worried eyes with my own. Tonight's going to be a disaster, isn't it? I would think so, yes. Nora suddenly stopped her march and looked back at us well are you coming i'm sure there'll be enough room on the pyre for all of us <clears throat> izzy and i let out an identical sigh and then followed into the night followed nora into the night <sighs> the sense of dread i was feeling dissipated a little as we approached the retired fire hall it was a cozy old place, and the warm yellow light spilling out from the window into the darkness was a welcoming sight. As we got closer, I spotted the man I had been looking for all day. You two go on ahead, I said to my aunts. I'll be right there. Where are you going? Nora called out testily, but I ignored her and hurried over to John Graves. Hello, girlie, he said. Wasn't sure if you and yours would show up for the circus tonight. I could say the same about you, I returned the smile he was giving me. But my plans had begun to 
I'm sorry, but my palms had begun to sweat under my gloves. This wasn't exactly how I wanted to give him the letter. The guilt of keeping it from him, though, had become nearly unbearable. I knew how I would feel if Adam had left a letter and it had been kept from me. I reached into my bag. I have something for you. The younger Gray's brother frowned. He took the letter and s stared at it a good long time before looking back up at me. Where did you get this? Just then, someone caught my attention. A few people had gathered outside from the front door of the fire hall, but only one was staring at me, Maureen Graves. There was no mistaking the look of warning on her face. The person who gave it to me asked that I not tell you where it came from. They want to explain how. It's been opened, John said, holding up the envelope. I know. I can promise you I haven't read it. And if the person who passed it along to me doesn't come to you soon, I'll tell you everything I know. That's not good enough, he said. I know it's not, and I'm so sorry for that. I really am. I dashed away without looking back. I was certain if I stayed a moment longer, I'd tell him the truth, and I couldn't do that. I didn't know why Maureen wanted to keep it a secret, but I had promised I wouldn't tell. And for all I knew, she was in danger. I rushed up the steps of the fire hall, hurried inside, and found my way over to my aunt's. What was that about? Izzy asked under her breath. I'll tell you later. The hall, normally empty, except for the antique firefighting equipment roped off in the corner, was filled with fold-out chairs and a table stocked with homemade cookies, coffee, and tea. Izzy had brought her own special treats to add to the mix. They were made with the intention of heightening feelings of community, so hopefully everyone was hungry. My eyes trailed over to the robust crowd. All the usual people were there. Many of them were smiling when they saw us looking at them, but casting sneaking looks in our directions when they thought we weren't. The tension, however, was clearly getting to some. Poor Bertie Klein, head of the Women's Society, went quite pale when I caught her looking at Nora. Thankfully, our neighbor Minnie Abernathy was in the process of handling her, handing her a cookie, so there was a good chance she'd recover. I wasn't at all surprised to see Rip Graves and his wife, Maureen, in the front row. Besides them sat Mary and her daughter. A cold feeling settled in the pit of my stomach when I spotted the thick file Liz had on the seat beside her. She certainly looked prepared. I had just begun to wonder if John had gone home when he stepped inside, hat gripped in his hand, face flushed with emotions. He must have tucked the letter away because I couldn't see any sign of it. He took a seat at the back of the room, away from his family. Also in the back row of sat an attendee I hadn't been expecting to see, Nixie from Charm Treasures. The flash of bright pink hair pulled up in a ponytail made her hard to miss, along with the giant earrings she had on. They were black hats, black witches' hats, to be precise. Wasn't that just terrific? When she spotted us, she shot her hand up in greeting. I lifted mine in return while Nora let out an exasperated sigh. <sighs> just then, I noticed Beatty making his way through the chairs to get over to us. Ladies? he said in a tight whisper. I'm not going to lie. I had been hoping you all would stay home tonight. And miss the show? Nora asked with a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes. Look, I realize I'm not your lawyer when it comes to this particular issue, but I'd like to offer you all some advice I sincerely hope you'll take. Of course, Beatty, Izzy said. You know we respect your opinion. Then promise me you'll say nothing. I can't promise that, Nora said, with a dismissive shake of her head. Now, I'm being serious. This hall is not a courthouse, but you can rest assured every word that comes out of your mouth will be in the meeting notes, and you do not want anything you say to be misconstrued. Nora narrowed her, her eyes. I'm certain, I'm certainly not going to sit back and say nothing. You will if you know what's good for you. Beatty said with the firmest voice I had ever heard him say. 
and that goes for all of you. From what I've heard, Liz Coleman is going to try to get a rise out of you, and she's a smart woman with a bit of a mean streak, so don't take the bait. Is that clear? <clears throat> Nora took a long breath. <sighs> Crystal. Beatty studied her face, but she was revealing nothing. Well, good. I hope you mean that. I'm going to go sit back down, but keep in mind what I've said. All of you, just lay low. Beatty walked back over to his seat beside Roxy, who gave us a big smile and a wave. At least she wasn't worried. Okay, everyone, please take your seats. We'd like to begin, a firm voice called out. William stood at the podium, placed at the front of the room. A few other council members sat behind her at a long table. They looked pretty uncomfortable. My aunt and I hurried to the only my aunts and I hurried to the only three seats left. Williams clapped her hands to quiet the crowd. Now, before we get started, I'd like to say a few words on behalf of the council. We know this has been an upsetting time for everyone. Constance Graves was a beloved member of our community, and we will dearly miss her. There were a few awkward coughs and a couple of chairs scraped against the floor. That being said, and despite what may have brought some of you he out here tonight, this is not a trial. I felt my eyes widen. By saying this was not a trial, this meeting suddenly felt a great deal like a trial. I exchanged looks with Izzy, then looked over to Nora, but she was staring straight ahead. Unlike previous town hall meetings, tonight will be an open forum for citizens to expect, express their safety concerns. The council, however, has requested that comments be solely limited to town safety. Any references to the ongoing criminal investigation will be shut down. That's a laugh. The room fell silent as we all looked over to the man who had spoken, Rip Graves, Jr., I don't see how we can talk about town safety, he began whirling around in his seat to face Nora, without discussing the fact that my sister has been murdered. 